Lui, c'est mon meilleur ami. Cadeau. Il habite à Los Angeles depuis 5 ans. Ça fait 3 ans que t'es sexuellement décédé, bébé. Je fais du yoga, des thérapies pour aller bien. Non, c'est pas pour finir sur des applications de cul, quand même So I really, really enjoyed your film. There's so much to unpack here about a woman's uh, sort of hope for a better future by leaving Paris and moving to Los Angeles. But my first question is for Lisa, do you really go on a new date? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's funny because most of people ask me this question. Nobody asked me, did you really meet such an amazing guy? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, they're all gonna go on a date now to have a new date <laughs> yeah I, I, I am very adventurous i am very adventurous that's cool um now this is based on your story you know you were unhappy there were emotional loose ends when your mother died so you came over to los angeles and how much how much did you expect the move to improve your life as much as it did by the way <laughs> It really did improve my life, but it's just also because there is something I feel a little bit uh, unhappy in Paris. I don't know why I'm much happier when I talk in English. It must go in parts of my brain that makes me more joyful. Yeah, it's very strange. It's like Sophie said that sometimes she needs to, she, she uses English to express some stuff. Even with my daughter in Paris, we speak English sometimes because there are things that we say in English and I can't explain you why. So the language is very important. I have a lot of friends because I was living here 10 years ago. So I'm not alone in Los Angeles. I have many friends. And, you know, when you do movies, at, you know, I've done eight movies in France and I have a little hope that maybe I'm going to do movies here now. So I need to move. And oh, okay. uh, also, I love the sun and the palm trees. Yes, it's very important. At a certain age, you know, sun and palm trees are really important. <laughs> I think I get that. Yes, I'm up yeah. here and it's like freezing cold. I Sophie, know. Sophie, you're, you've taken on a really intimate project based on Lisa's actual life experiences, in detailed life experiences. I mean, I'm, you've done you know, interesting in characters before who with a connection to reality. But did this, was this extra concerning for you at all? Well, I always feel extra concerned about many, many things. And especially when I like a scenario, I have to feel extra concerned uh, because I'm the first reader and I need to be moved and, and to project myself in the part. So it, it, it involved all my, all my body and my mind in a way. And also because Lisa more personally talks about things that are more looking like who I am in life. You know, I'm a 50 years old woman. I'm, I live in 2022. Uh, you know, I'm a mother. I lost my mom too. I mean, there's a lot of things going on because that's what happens more or less around this age. So. It's like a, a, a witness uh, of my time, of who women are nowadays. So it's universal and also personal. So, of course, I feel extra concerned. The scene when you're in your Halloween costume on the street and you get a devastating phone call about something that's happened back in Paris, that is so powerful. That image has stayed with me for so long because there's this joy in the outfit and this utter devastation. Tell me about shooting that. Well, actually, it really happened to me, this phone call in real life. I was like, if this happens in a movie, nobody's going to believe it happened in real life. I, 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 ha I, I had this phone call. It was Halloween. It was, I was in New York and everybody was in costume of death around me. And I thought, this is crazy that life brings me such a decor for such a news. And I thought it was very poetic from life because, you know, I felt like I'm not alone. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, you know, this is the th uh, 31st of uh, October was the day, the birthday of the father of my mother. And she really had decided she wanted to die that day. And she kind of did, you know, she, she waited for me that I could oh. come back, but, you know, so for me, I'm very happy. You know, you're the first journalist to tell me about this scene. And this is for me the scene 
that I love the most in the movie yeah. because Sophie gave me so much that we didn't have a lot of time because I decided to shoot it in sunset as opposed to during the night. So we only have one hour for the whole scene. Wow. And, it, that... and it's really, really not a lot. Yes. And Sophie knew there was no time. It was one of the most difficult scene because of the outfit, because of what she has to play. And she gave me so much in like 12, 10 minutes. I knew I had the movie in, in my hands. That's because, great. Congratulations yeah. to both of you ladies. And thank you so much. Thank you Merci. so much. Merci. Il y a les gens qui rêvent de changer de vie. Et il y a ceux qui, comme moi, décident de le faire. Lui, c'est mon meilleur ami. Cadeau. Il habite à Los Angeles depuis 5 ans. Ça fait 3 ans que t'es sexuellement décédé, bébé. Je fais du yoga, des thérapies pour aller bien. Non, c'est pas pour finir sur des applications de cul, quand même. Je t'ai trouvé lui pour demain soir. Ouais. C'est comme les crêpes, bébé. La première, elle est toujours foirée. Pas obligé de la manger, de toute façon, la première crêpe. Tu penses trop à la française. Montre sa tête. C'est quand même un avion de chasse. Un peu jeune quand même, non ah. Faut sortir un peu là de ses applis à la con. Je voudrais laisser faire le destin. Et... Si Cendrillon elle avait laissé faire le destin, elle serait encore en train de faire des ménages chez sa belle-mère et à parler à des petites souris. C'est tellement génial d'être anonyme, de coucher avec un anonyme. You're so fucking sexy. C'est juste une autre façon d'être spirituel en fait. Hein. Bon, enfin, c'était très physique hein, quand même. 